Playing through the Mass Effect trilogy was a special experience. You know how there's that meme about how in the 50s people thought the 2020s would be a god tier hyper advanced civilization and it turns out that all we do with our advanced technology is send each other stupid memes about John Cena and grape surgery? Yeah, if you asked me when I was a snot nosed kid playing Fire Red on the GBA what I thought games could be like in the future, I honestly believe Mass Effect would kind of live up to those lofty dreams. The Mass Effect trilogy, in my humble opinion, rivals any other piece of fiction or Fingers. art in truly allowing the consumer to I experience the space <laughs> opera fantasy. Mass Effect's two greatest strengths are world building and character stories. Let's talk about the universe of Mass Effect real quick. Just like the Yakuza team, Bioware understood that making a world feel real isn't about constructing an atomic level, countrywide, 9 million polygon open world. If we break down what the Citadel actually is, it's a landing cutscene, an awkward jog, an awkward elevator loading screen, an even more awkward dance scene, a cheeky bit of intergalactic flirtation, and then Commander Shepard's favorite, favorite store, store on the, on the Citadel. Citadel. Somehow, these fragmented pieces of code constitute a world so vivid I can almost smell Shepard's sweet dance floor sweat. The Citadel doesn't need a bloated multi-million pixel digitally constructed open world. The real Citadel is punching the fake new shill media. It's engaging in capitalism. It's meeting this beautiful blob of an alien. Let me tell you a story about Arnhem real quick. Me and my boys from secondary school were taking a graduation trip and, long story short, had messed up our transportation so badly that last minute we were stranded in Arnhem with Bruh. no accommodation, Bruh. no cash, no Bruh. service and only got there at midnight. No disrespects to the homies in Arnhem but it's not exactly the most famous of places so we literally had no clue where we were. We tried to sleep in the train station, got kicked out, tried to chill in the local Maccas, of course it was shut and ended up spending the night camped out in this random little car park. I genuinely could not tell you anything about Arnhem's layout. All I could tell you about was the car park and all the geezers who would come by slightly drunk and have a laugh at us idiot British boys. Despite my lack of objective Arnhem expertise, I can so clearly picture my Arnhem. That's what Bioware understood when creating Mass Effect. Alongside world building, Bioware just nailed the characters. When I first played through Mass Effect 1, I did a blind playthrough, aka I just went through the game making decisions based purely on how I felt. No specific role playing, no maxing out of stats, just passionate feeling. Let me tell you, on that first playthrough I fell in love. Liara Tsoni, sweet, beautiful, blue Liara, what a woman. On my second playthrough, I decided to go full renegade, humanity first, and would thus take Ashley as my suitable bride. You know what happened? I ended up giving up on my humanity first doctrine, changed to the paragon path, and romanced Liara again. Partly because Ashley is a literal psychopath, a future space Karen, but mainly because Liara's radiance shone through and changed me. Marriage, she made me a better age, man. And a lot of little blue children? <laughs> As much as I heard a bunch of reviewers state that Mass Effect's universe eclipses the quality of the actual games, I really feel like people undersell how important the characters are to making that universe feel so special. The best crewmates provide personal windows into the intergalactic affairs of the Mass Effect verse. The universe and the characters have a reflexive relationship where they build off each other's greatness. That's probably why the human crewmates are easily the most boring. To return back to my beloved Arnhem, if I was alone, Arnhem would have just been the place where a sad, scared little man spent the night cowering in a car park. Because I had my boys, it became the site of my very own galactic quest. I will never forget how one of my boys, shout out to Fred, was just so pissed. And while we were all trying to keep each other awake, he just put his headphones on and simmered in silent rage. No hate to my boys, but replace them with an Asarian goddess in an absolute Turian stud and BOOM! That's why the characters are amazing and so important to Mass Effect's success. As much as I've complimented the trilogy, looking back there was definitely some dumb shit. The morality system is simple to say the least. It's annoying because it confines you to either being a kiss ass, aka a simp, or to being an absolute prick. It sucks because the game rewarded you for not having a complex and varied moral compass. Instead, it wanted you to commit to one path, no matter what. Why can't I be kind and subservient to my goddess Liara and still beat up the shill media? Come on, Bioware. The morality system kind of worked in opposition to the idea of 
choice, one of the supposedly key tenets of the series. The conversation the wheel, in conjunction, was, shall we say, limited. A lot of little blue children. When Bioware tried to tell you that aggressively shouting like a renegade at two women engaged in a vocal blood feud would solve the situation, I knew the conversation system was fatally flawed. That was the most sci-fi moment in the whole damn series. As much as I make fun of the choices in Mass Effect, while playing I was still so awed at just the crazy ambition of having choices carry over through games. It sure ain't perfect, but it's still so cool to see choices from the first game still having an effect in the third game. I actually think the core action gameplay nails choice better than the actual choice mechanics. Mass Effect 1 is janky as hell, the definition of a rough diamond. A Mass Effect 2? Oh baby! The game just feels great to play and I love how genuinely unique each class feels. That Vanguard warp? Mwah. It's just so cool man. I agree with the consensus that Mass Effect 3 went a little too action heavy, but it's still fun as hell. The beauty of the combat choices is that they understood that choice becomes meaningful when there are consequences. It's important that the Vanguard is weaker at longer ranges than other classes, but a beast up close because that underscores the fact that you actually made a choice. When you had to choose between the three weapon upgrades and ME2, that was genius. That feeling a genuine choice was again powerful and aided by the fact that all three legendary guns were fun as hell to use. Time to talk about the trilogy's ending, the so-called elephant in the room. To be honest, it was doomed from the start. Only one story has actually nailed the Resolve the Universe ending. Almost always this type of ending just dilutes all the personal motivations and character arcs into a convoluted, confusing mess. That one exception is Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, and that's a goat tier story, basically in a league of its own. The outrage towards 3's ending, to me, just emphasized how invested we all became in the Mass Effect space opera. In contrast to how Game of Thrones' ending, in my opinion, does kind of ruin the whole series, for me Mass Effect was always about the journey. It was about the friends made along the way. Honestly, the Citadel DLC is the perfect ending and everything I could have wanted for in a last hurrah before the final mission. If it was included in the base game, 3 would have been looked at so much more fondly, and the Citadel DLC is required playing in my humblest of opinions. If anything, my biggest complaint with 3 was how downgraded the crewmates were. Jesus Christ, I hate James Vega. In 2, you had Thane, an intergalactic assassin who is also a remorseful and spiritual father on a personal quest to make sure his son doesn't follow his dark path. In 3, you have James Vega, a roided up dunce who just wants to see how much you can bench, bro. I first thought Vega was gonna be the Brit shown in the reveal trailer, but nope. I would genuinely take this 3 second man over James goddamn Vega. Like I said in the intro, it's crazy to me how so many of the ambitious advances Mass Effect made to the video game medium have just been completely forgotten and thrown to the wayside. I really felt like Bioware was genuinely trying to use technological advancements in gaming hardware to push the medium forward and try and achieve the quote unquote perfect single player experience. Nowadays, technological advancements are literally used to get kids addicted to gambling for in-game cosmetics. Bruh. The perfect example of straying from Mass Effect's path is ironically Mass Sorry, Effect Andromeda, where the OG Mass Effects created real feeling worlds through immersive interaction, Andromeda just has bloated lifeless expanses. Where the OG Mass Effects created genuine choice in combat, Andromeda, while admittedly having fun combat, gives you so much choice that it just feels like a generic shooter with no real choices to make at all. Where the OG Mass Effects were condensed and meaningful at every minute, Andromeda and other modern games love to zombify you with boring ass repetition. Where the OG Mass Effects had ass, modern games are ass. I am personally excited to revisit the Mass Effect verse with the Legendary Edition, and honestly I'm glad they deleted Miranda's digital tuchus. Hopefully this will guide more players into Liara's tender embrace. Making this video, I gotta say, I found it a little ironic that Mass Effect's main plot is about Shepard and the boys rediscovering the truth behind ancient Prothean lost technology, while the Legendary Edition will in many ways rediscover the lost gameplay design and ambition of the Mass Effect trilogy itself. Let's just hope we all don't get reaped in the process. We're being okay.